Sunstein Williamson to bring the word of God. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not alone. We're not alone. We're not alone. We thank God for his presence in our midst. Excess love. She says, you love me too much. Yes, Woo! That's what she said. It's an excess. Yes, I don't is. know about you, but you're here this morning, so his love for you is an excess. You're kind. You're patient. Those of you who question me in this morning, let me tell you also, God is here with a blessing in store for you because he realized that no matter what, if, if he can tell us what can pluck us out of his hand, mm -hmm. we're saying then this morning, God, what can stop me from coming into your presence? Mm -hmm. Jesus. And so for that, God, have a blessing in store for us. Mm -hmm. and it's all right. Look, it's all because of him. Mm -hmm. My God. All because everything good that we have done, we don't deserve what we are like. I say, God, all because of everything that I have, mm -hmm. not all that I am, everything that I have, Today, it's all because of you. And so I know many of us have that testimony and those praise on our lips. It's all because of him. And so we're going to give God thanks and praise for his faithfulness. Thank you for those who are here with us this morning in spite of the weather because we know that who we come to serve is already here. We met him here. We didn't have to bring him. This is his dwelling place. He chose to be here because he knew we were coming. He knew you were coming this morning. And so no matter what we see, we know he's still working. Yeah, no matter how you feel, he's still working. Yeah. Like Minister Moses say, the weather, the weather, the whatever, the weather, the weather, the weather, but it's not a matter of state. <laughs> weather. The weather. Weather, the weather, or weather, or not, or whatever, or whatever. Oh, but we're still here. Yeah. So we're not watching nothing, but we're keeping our eyes focused on the God. And we know he's here to bless us this morning. So get your Bibles for me, please. You'll find me in the book of St. Luke this morning. Luke chapter 5. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. And it reads thus, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we work hard and all day and night and haven't caught anything, but you say, I will let it down. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners, partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats and so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled up their boats on the shore, left everything, and follow him. Let us pray. Father, I give you thanks and praise this morning for being our Father who art in heaven. Now, God, as we enter your presence right now, Lord, I pray we now that you would use this vessel that's before you, Lord, to bring glory and honor to you, Lord. As an instrument in your hand, Lord, I pray that the word go forth this morning will fall on good soil and bring forth fruit in this season. Now bless us all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I have chosen for our topic today a net-breaking blessing. All those who showed up today, it's a net-breaking blessing. That's my topic for the day. And my key voice is verse 6. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. People of God, we got to call for help for what God can drop on y'all for being in this presence this morning. It's going to be net-breaking. 
A story is told of a grandfather who told his grandchildren about him kept going to America. He told them of the trains and the ship he had to take from his home to Eastern Europe. He told of being in the process at Ellis Island and now he had gone to a cafeteria in Lower Manhattan to get something to eat. There he sat down on an empty table and waited quite some time for someone to take his order. Nobody came. Finally, a woman with a tray full of food sat down opposite him and explained how a cafeteria works. She said, you have to stand at this end, pointing to where the trays for, and then go along the food line and pick up what you want. At the other end, they'll tell you how much you have to pay. The grandfather reflected a moment and then said, I soon learned that's how everything works in America. Life is like a cafeteria. You can get anything you want, even very great success, if you are willing to pay the price. The difference between where you are and where you want to be can be summed up in one word. You have to work. Today, I want to share with you a familiar story of what can happen for you when you work the work that God has given you. The Bible said that Luke reported one day that Jesus was standing by the lake at the water edge when he saw two boats. And they weren't doing anything. They were just up on the seashore resting. Now, we know that the purpose for which the boat were made was to go out. That's the purpose for a boat. To be used at any time. They were made to launch out in order to bring in a reward for their work. But the Bible says that they were just there on the seashore. How many Christians are like that today, people of God? They get there on the seashore doing nothing. Nothing. Instead of launching out into the deep to become fishes of men. Out there, there are numerous fish to be caught. Souls to rent for Jesus. Way to do, but they find comfort on the shore. Oh, I gotta do this. I got comfortable right here. Jesus was waking, He was ministering. The purpose of which He came to was to bring mankind back to God. So He was teaching the crowd of people that were surrounding Him until He saw a need to launch out. He said, Now this crowd getting too big now. Because if you're standing here, teach it, and they keep crowding them, you have to keep going back and keep them back to the end to the seashore. He saw the two boats, he said, now, nah, this is a plan. You all stay there, I get in the boat. The further I go from York, I can minister to a wider range of people. And that's just what he did. When you are on the seashore, or you're nearby, and you can't, or you refuse to minister to win souls, you're in a sad place. Jesus was there, he was winning souls. He was about his father's business, winning souls. Jesus chose to teach near the seashore and was successful in his ministry. You don't have to stay where you are and say, okay, this is where I'm going to do. I mean, that nobody comes, that's going to be turning in my, my, my road, my shoulder, and I go home. You can't do that. Whatever seashore you are in, you can't, and you could, or you refuse to, you have to win souls. You turn down your vessel because you don't have a pulpit to preach from. And I I can stay on the seashore. Now, I ain't going to church. I got that, that's our pulpit. I, I ain't going to preach. So you refuse. Or, or I don't have a church, I, I, I was never a founder for church, I don't have a church of my own, so I refuse. Or, I come to church today and not only five people show up to church today, so I, I, I gotta do nothing, so I, I like that. I, I, see, Jesus had a crowd, so he's ministered, so if I don't have a crowd, it don't sense to me do, I might just stay on the seashore. And that's what a lot of Christians are doing, they refuse to assemble themselves because they're looking for a crowd, they don't have a crowd, they ain't going nowhere. They have to be in a crowd to show, oh, I'm capable of doing this, or I'm capable of doing that. But Jesus had a purpose because Jesus knew what his ministry was. He came to bring those back to God. We have to launch out. You can't be there and say, oh, I can do it from a distance. Oh, I don't have a pulpit. I don't have a church. Oh, I don't have a microphone. I don't have a quiet end to bring me in. You know, I need a quiet to, to, to do whatever to do so I can come on again. Those are things that we need them in, but you don't need those things. You don't need them things. Some Christians today don't catch nothing. They ain't been trying to preach. They ain't trying to teach. All men are sold for the master. They come to put as it is. Sorry to say, God help me with this. But Jesus launched out for a bigger catch. Do you want a big catch today? Yeah. All right. You got to work. But watch how Luke described what Peter was doing. He was washing his neck 
Resignify that he was finished for the day. That's it for me. The boat on the seashore, the nets being washed, so that's it. I have nothing to do in that mountain, so that's how it is. And me and the body of Christ seem to act just like that. Oh, I say, that's all I'm worrying about. Oh, I don't say, and so I ain't worrying about who he say, that's it for me. So let, let me let me turn myself in. I get on the seashore. Too bad for y'all. You only want to see God for yourself because the Bible says you got to work at your own soul salvation. But then, come on, that's your business. I can stay right on the seashore. And that's how a lot of Christians are today. We ain't checking for nobody else. But the sea full of souls. Ready on you to cast your net out to bring them in. And you're right there washing your necks and you finish. The world is the sea. So, so you don't know Christ. And you, you don't say the Father, you can say, I, well, I ain't for nobody else. But if you throw your net out, you don't know what you're going to catch. You'll catch a soul. But now here comes Jesus, whose work is just beginning, and he's working on a big catch. Now imagine that. He come over to buy you. But he needs your vessel to launch out for a catch. He needs your hand to do the work. He needs your mouth to preach and declare his word. He needs your feet to go to the utmost parts of the earth. He needs your body to be his temple for him to dwell on. So he needs your vessel. God needs your vessel this morning. What would verse 3 say? He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Now Jesus didn't own a boat. He didn't have a boat. He wanted to launch out. So he needed to use an available less vessel. Are you gonna be the vessel that Jesus is gonna to use to launch out to bring in the souls? Because he didn't have no other vessel. He don't have no hands but us. Because he's seated up there. He don't have no feet but us. He don't have no body but us. And so are you making yourself available for God to use to launch out to go get a catch? I remember there's some place this morning. If you keep your boat on the shoreline, you'll get nothing. You will get nothing. Notice where the other boats were. They were out in the deep working. They weren't on the, so on the, on the seashore. The Bible said when Jesus approached to Nazareth, he saw two boats. He didn't see every boat on the shore. Two boats, them two of them come to the decision that we finished for day. The other boats were out in the sea working. We can't look at where we are and say, okay, Ain't nothing happening for me. Let me go turn in my thing. And I'll get in the deep. Not just sitting around waiting for the enemy to place fail in your mind. In this season, to get a net breaking blessing, you have to be working people of God. You can't just sit out loud and, and be comfortable and on the seashore and ice straight. Maybe you, gotta, you can't catch stuff on the seashore. You don't fish up on the seashore. Ain't nothing here. They all get in the deep. You can't just be sitting around waiting for the enemy to place fear in your mind or play doubt in your pathway or frustration and depression on your body. You stay on the seashore, you can get those things. Those things are on the seashore. The souls are out in the deep. You understand? Get up and go to work. What you're looking for in this season, people of God, you have to go where Jesus is to get it. Jesus was in the boat with Simon Peter. Jesus wasn't on the shore. He got in the boat and they launched out. Even though Peter was hesitant, he obeyed and he launched out. He didn't know what he wanted was out there in the deep. Because being a seasoned fisherman, he done toil all night. They ain't catch nothing. But what he wanted was out in the deep. Sometimes we have to let our inexperience give us a big catch. So watch this now. So Jesus didn't want a vessel who was so inexperienced knew where the catch was. You see where he's coming from? Jesus ain't no fisherman. He don't own a vessel. But he said, I tell you what, hop in the boat, say, let's go over this way in the deep. Now, I'm an experienced fisherman. I have been working all night and apparently I've been in the deep. But Jesus said, but well, you don't know the sport. I know the sport. He knew where the fish was and he even told him beside the throwing net on. Now, Peter being out fishing it, on this side, Jesus said, man, let's go a little deeper and throw it on that side. Now, he's an inexperienced fisherman. Now, let's go like that. We know he's a fish up there, but let's go there. Jesus didn't know fisherman. Peter's the experienced one. But Jesus said, you launch out in the deep and throw it out on that side. The sap on this side, then school. So I put the, hey, but I start putting the vessel together. 
So they say, they set on the side, they want to school. It's like I'm being a good guest out of them. Okay, they're the saved ones. God didn't tell them to go get them saved. God said, you need to throw your name on that side. See, because we know the same fish swim in school. So if they swim in school, they're set. Who played the hooky? Let's catch them set. Because they didn't want to be in school. They were all in school. They were was, they was swimming on the next side. So Jesus said, okay, them set them straight. We don't need to get them set. Throw your name on this side. On this side of the boat, it's where the hooky ones are. They're the ones who ain't say, let's get them set. And the Bible said that when they did that, when they threw the net on the next side, the net breaking blessing was out in the deep. The God of the universe, he don't do nothing small. He don't do nothing small. He does things deep, 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 deep. But you have to go where Jesus is to get what Jesus has for you. If I tell Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim, come for this fire all this place. Mr. Kim, she got to get the fire all this stuff in there. Don't she have to come to me? She have to come to me to get it. What you want, Jesus has. But you have to go to him. He said, it right. It ain't me. Come unto me. That's what he said. Come unto me, all ye that are laden. I know you want rest, but you gotta come. Yeah. Come unto me. I know you're sad, you want peace, but you gotta come. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all ye who are in problem and in need protection. Come unto me. I know what you need, but you gotta come. You can't stay where you are on the shore and get the peace in the deep. You have to go out there to get in. And many of us thinking, okay, now Jesus, now I, I, I saved. Now I need a home. But I can, I can stay right on the seashore. Bring the house to me, please. You know that don't work, right? Okay, Jesus, you know I'm yes, I'm saved. Um, and you want to use me? But you got to provide the church and bring the crowd and people and put them up and that come get me. We have to go wake to wake. God give you a mouth and your feet to go and bring them in. But be so comfortable on the seashore that, oh, it doesn't matter. I can stay right there. I ain't I, I saved. But if you want something from me, Jesus, you got to bring it. I, 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 I comfortable right here. I don't have to do nothing, but you, you wanted to use me. So you bring what you want to me. And don't go like that. Peter hop in the boat with Jesus and they launch out for a catch. We, uh, we want to stay on the seashore, we can't get nothing out there. All you got, if you walk on the beach on the seashore, all you see is weed. All you see, you don't see no fish up there. But we want the fish. Oh, I give me a good piece of fish right now, boy. And I, I on the seashore. What I want is out there, but what I want, I stand in here thinking I can get it from a distance. No, you have to go where it is, and it's not easy all the time. It's not in the shallow water or on the seashore because if it was that so, you could get it right there. If you, if you needed a fish, the fish would come up on the land and come to you, but it doesn't go like that. We have to go to a point there in our life where we won't get to go get it sometime. Hope that is seen, that ain't old. If I can see it, then that ain't, that ain't, that ain't old. Then I don't need it. So that ain't old. But some people stand right on the seashore and telling God to bring it to them where they are. Some things in life is not easy, but easy obtainable. It will not just happen for you. You have to go out here and get it sometime, even though you may be frustrated from the trials and the disappointed, and you can't give up like others. Peter gave up that day, and as far as he was concerned, that's it. But what Jesus has in store for you, you are waking the way while it is still day, and you have to go and call for help from those around to help you bring that in. That's what verse 7 said. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they began to sink. And both boats fell so much that they began to sink. Now, the Bible talked about the other boat. Now listen to this now. Peter and Peter's out fishing. Out there were John and James and someone's there to be. But they were waking. Peter's on the seashore. God said, I have something for you. Because I think and that's what they like about God. God ain't gonna use you and not bless you. God ain't gonna have me ministering here and, don't, and I can't be any of be able to be a blessing for me. So while I'm working this, and I and I stand in here, and God I have needs you, I need to use you, Celeste. I said, okay, Lord, I need you to just go there, guess what? So I said, God already been trying. I ain't in that nap, and God said, come go with me this time. I go on in the boat. That's Peter now, I'm gonna use that Peter. Peter hop in the boat, and they launch out. James. And John, they were already out there fishing. They were already out fishing. They were waking. They didn't give up and say, oh, um, Peter, God, and man, and Peter, and Captain, and Peter, season. Let's go in too. No. 
They stayed out there working. We can be up here doing what God asked to do, and we ain't looking at it. We see no results. We can't just give up just like that. Notice who we are this morning. You all didn't give us your time that we gave for a word this morning. And God have a word to keep you on a network and blessing. So what your Peter did? When God say, okay, you with me? You're working? Okay, I tell you what. I'm about to bless you. But what I get in store for you, you can't contain it. Because the Bible talks about the other boat. See, the other boat was in the area. There are people who connected you in your area. But I don't know what area I know about. The same thing that you're going through. You may be going through an area, a, a, a time of sickness. You may have another family member who, who going through to sickness. You may be in a financial need. You may have another family member who going through to a family. But they're in the same area. So when God bless you, you can say, girl, come see your man. You want to get here? Come to Jesus. You want to get your problem fixed in your financial thing? Come to Jesus. Because what God can bless you with, you can kind of carry it on. You have to call for help. And so what did Peter do? In the boat. Peter said, hey, 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 y'all, come this way. The fish is down here. But the thing about it, when God was throwing this to me, they were catching fishes, right? But Peter was trying to catch souls. Because you get God, I'm saying, from now on, you get fishes of men. He was a fisherman. But God said, from now on, you don't catch no more, only fish. You get fishing, you'll be fishing on men. So he called in two other people. He brought them to where Jesus was, not really where the fish was, you know. Come this way, who that way? Jesus this way. Where Jesus was, the fish was. So I am now calling people out. Man, you all need to come this way, my son. You want salvation? You, you got to come this way. You want healing? You got you to gotta come this way. God is doing something for us as vessels of all for his use, to get him glory, but we have to call others. Who in the area? You got to keep this goodness to yourself because you got to contain it all. The blessing of God have in store for you and me. You got to contain that. You got to call for help. And that's what Peter did. Peter did come this way. And the Bible says, both boats began to sink. I mean, boy, it's a catch. We can't contain this. If we don't try to make it in the shore, we can lose all our catch. What am I saying to you this morning? This morning I'm saying that God has a relief Tell us to launch out. The seashore, you can't catch souls from here. Because you're not comfortable and you're not working. But if you launch out and go into the highways and the byways, food stuff, I do the policy stuff, my workplace, you do it and get, get your nails too. Anywhere you could be a fisherman, you're gonna bring in a, a catch. You see, we literally thinking. God, man, I, I ain't no pastor. Or God, I ain't no middle of God. You don't give no word. The conversation, and when people see the, the song we sing, all will see and know how good God is. When they say, God, you look good, eh? I tell you, just Jesus. Just Jesus. That's all I can tell them. Man, you still work? Yeah, just Jesus. Someone asked me, I said, you still working on? I said, yeah, what, what do you want me to do? I said, I, I'm just blessed. God, give me health and strength. I, I don't just want to die on the seashore. I can still work. To me, working at, I see how I look at my working nowadays, people of God, I don't be looking at my work nowadays for money. You know? I look at my work nowadays to be a blessing to someone. Somebody need you in our workplace. So let's see how people come to me. So let's what you doing, you by yourself? I see you in my office. I can come see you for a moment. Yeah, my God, what happened? Well, I need you to pray for me. You know what time I say, come on tonight? You know what time I say, come on in my workplace? You by, I know from the top, come down, I know I'm, I'm definitely permanent secretary. What you doing? I say, I know that. Like, I say, well, you want to see me here because she's so hot, you know. I say, well, no, I'm coming down to your office. Okay, come, pray for me. I don't make cares. So I don't look at me still on the workplace for me to make money. Because I bless. But the fact that God helped me there for you, for you, for you. I don't know who's going to come and knock one door in, or my door one day and say, I need you. And they don't want, you know, they better can't find me no place, but they know Celeste away. And you will talk to Celeste. So I look at it. We are the big fishes of baby wherever we are. You can't look at your catch and say, I go down the kitchen. Um, okay, uh, the thing about it, and, and, and Peter knows that they they fishes now. Let's put it home in the Bahamas. They made a big group in there. Jack, snap up, and made toy with all kinds of fish. That's who we can encounter in our catch. We only they, we're not gonna encounter those who halfway save. We can catch them. The rapists and the thieves and the murderers, they who, they, that's who will be in your net. 
you don't know what you're going to catch. You can change somebody's nice side by just going on fishing and middle straight to them. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they're going to hang on with that. They killed somebody last night, you know. No, but you're ministering somebody that how that's so heck, so so later, and they can repent, God forgive me. You don't know what they did. Get job is just to get leave them in there. You gotta make them get sick because only Christ can save them. But the fact is that you are a fisher of man. You can throw your net on, you don't know what you can catch. But in your net can be all different levels of life that you will have to touch one day. Do look for the one but that one on the um um this life. I, I need to deal with you. But what happened to the one who happened to sweet up? Or what happened to the one who done teeth? Or what happened to the one who done kill? You, you can leave them out there. They're the souls we have to go for. It's going to be so full. We have to catch all those souls. And when we bring them in to Jesus, that Jesus can say, now you are fishes of man. I get something in store for you. And that was Peter's blessing for using, for Jesus using his boat. We are the vessel. Jesus need to use this. Peter, profession was fishing. God bless him with that. Your profession, by the way, is in on the of training. God may bring him no clients. That's, that's, that's how your blessing come. Her business is rental. God may bring him no customers. We don't know. This. See, when God use you, he can bless you with what you need. Peter got blessed with what he was, a fisherman. We can get blessed with just what we are in, 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 in Christ. And God ain't going to use you and not give you your blessing and a, and a net breaking abundance. And so when we go into what we go to in terms of standing up for Christ, throw your net out. Something or they can get catch. And whatever you get, bring it into Jesus. Because he is the one who's going to do the same thing. I didn't really want you to go, you know, that's why he tells his disciples, I want you to go two by two. Go by your teach and preach. Wherever you go, teach and preach. You're going to push Jesus down the throat. Just decree my way. And I can do the rest. We, some of us don't want to do that. We comfortable. I want my life to like that, oh dear. I don't want nobody not, not accept me. And, and I don't want to tell me I ain't ready. Or I don't want to say I ain't preach good. Or I don't want to say I ain't sing good. We do looking at the circumstances. Lord, um, if you use, what's all I say, Lord, if you use anybody, use me. We got to be able to let God use us. Because your vessel is a vessel what God needs. He could, God could pick any one of that boat so there, but he picked Simon on. He needs your vessel today. Stand to your feet for me, please. We have to come to a point in our lives when we out there fishing for souls, don't look at what's in your net. God will let you catch what he needs you to catch. He'll let you minister to who he wants you to minister because for everyone out there, there's one of us who can minister to somebody. It don't have to be where I can just make sure you get saved. No. I put it to me. This morning, that's a good example. Annette. I was walking and I picked up Annette to come. The gentleman was walking with a basket, no water. I stopped. I said, So you want to ride? He said, No, I got into my truck. Your truck was like crossroad, like where flower says. I said, Yeah, but that's no water. I said, I can step back. Because this truck was beyond that. I said, You can hop in the car. I can take you right there. That wasn't even 30 seconds of driving. I drive him straight to his car. On the dry land, he come out, hop in his vehicle. Was that not true? And I say, and I try to show him, this is how we are when we are, can I say now? I don't know later on when I pass him through that village again, I don't encounter that same man. Cause we were talking God then. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, we might have dropped in his hearing. Right. And he may say, man, you uh, uh, remember you give me a right name? You got to church, let me go to church with you. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we can catch. I said, it's as simple as you driving. And I offered. I could have made a catch right there. And so that's how our life should be. We don't know what we are encounter, but whatever we encounter, we have to give God the fight because he used our vessel to do a blessing. Yeah. And so lift your hands up for me this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this people this morning. You said in your word, this is the day that you have made for us to rejoice. We thank you for a net breaking blessing for using these vessels this morning to give you glory and honor. God, you're not mine that you should lie. When you say you are a rewarder to them that diligently seek you. And this morning, Lord, we enter your gates this morning with thanksgiving. We came into your court with praise, exalted and magnifying the King of Kings because you deserve it. Now, our vessels, Lord, we surrender them to you. Like Simon, Lord, we launching out today. 
And whatever I catch you, Father, going to be bringing them in because you say you're going to make us fishers of men. Equip us with the wisdom, the knowledge, to understand the purpose of which you have called us and place us into the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, Lord, bless us all. Give us a net breaking blessing, a catch that would be out of this way for all to see and know that we serve an awesome God, a mighty God, a God who's everlasting, a God who is purposeful to fill us with his blessing. And now, Lord, I commit each and every one that's represented here today into your hand, Lord, because we're going to have a catch. We're going to be blessed, and it's going to be net breaking. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all. It's offering time. We could be 